Hello, and welcome to our channel, Marstream, your public performance broadcast platform. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can also donate to our tip jar and support the arts and artists of Marstream by clicking the link below in the description. Check out our website, themarsh.org, for all upcoming live performances. Now, enjoy the show. Welcome back. We're happy to have you all again, or see you all again. This is the fourth week of class, so hopefully you've been able to practice and are starting to feel some benefits from, from the practice. So just a, a quick rundown of what we're gonna do this week. We are, as usual, um, Jana's going to build the chi field and get us into a good state before we start. And then we're gonna move into some questions and answers. We haven't really given you guys a chance to ask questions. And this is a, a, with the class ending next week, it's a great time to look at anything you might be wondering about. Um, then we're gonna talk about some different aspects of chi, how to use it, what it's about. And then we'll do a, um, the practice, an extended practice again, but this time with an extended pouring chi, the practice, the um, takeaway that we've been showing the last few classes. So we'll do that, an extended version focusing on chi and the awareness of chi in your body. And then we'll do just a brief breathing practice again and closing. So let's get started, Jana. All right, lovely to be here with you all. Welcome. Um, we're going to build a chi field, which is kind of a settling in, setting an intention for the class, becoming more present. You're welcome to do this standing up or sitting down, whatever it is. We're just going to do mostly an internal sort of um, still practice, so to speak, not moving, but just with our, with our minds, our chi, and our hearts. So finding a comfortable position, and if you can, this having the spine straight, not leaning against something, but straight, although you're welcome to lie down and get comfortable if that works for you in the moment. And gently closing the eyes, bringing awareness inside the body, feeling yourself sitting, your sits bones, your feet on the ground, wherever you're touching, noticing gravity holding you, supporting, noticing the sounds in the room. Bringing awareness in even deeper to inside the body and noticing the mind. What's the mind up to? Noticing energy levels. How are you feeling? Noticing how the body is in this moment. With ourselves in this moment, right here, right now, feeling ourselves. Begin to notice the heart, the heart space, the chi of the heart. And with an openness, connecting our hearts together for this class, a supportive learning environment, something new, something we share something we're building together. And open awareness out even further, connecting with nature. The peace of nature, the calm of nature, the growth, the change, the cycles. and opening out more to connect with the whole universe, all of life. Connect 
Connecting with ease, openness, trust in our own process, gratitude for the moments we have for this moment. I'm drawing awareness back to the body. An internal focus. Maintaining some of that internal focus. When you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Hello. As Tracy mentioned, uh, we'd like to open it up. Last week, we had talked about pouring chi. We talked about the mind activity of Yuan Qigong. We also talked about the takeaway of pouring chi and using the mind activity right up with that. And so I'd like to open it up to see if anyone had a chance to experiment with that. If you'd like to share some of your experience or if you have questions about anything that's come up in the last few weeks in class, you're welcome to either put that in the chat or um, unmute yourself and ask. So there's a question in the chat that says, when you are extending your arms, are you going out to get chi? So there's a couple of ways to answer this and I'll try both of them. And if it's not clear, feel free to clarify what you're asking if I don't answer it. Um, so this practice, we are extending our arms out a lot. And the movement of the body is synchronized with the activity of the mind. So the mind is going out, awareness is going out and awareness is coming in. And the mind is what's connecting to this universal chi, the mind and the consciousness. And when we connect with that chi and we guide our awareness back to inside the body, um, the chi automatically comes in. So, when the arms are going out, we are connecting out, but it's really when we come back in that the gathering happens. So there's a lot to a lot to this question, which we'll I hope to cover a little more when we talk about chi and how it works. But the um, connecting out to the infinite chi, infinite abundant chi, and coming back inside, and it's really having that internal awareness and connecting back in that starts to gather the chi in the body. We live a very externally focused life. And one of the things we're teaching ourselves to do in Qigong is to draw our awareness inward. And as we do that, we start to be able to gather more chi and become more aware of how we're spending chi, how we're using chi when we're gathering it, when we're spending it. So your question was about the arm movement but it links to the mind activity. So the arms aren't really doing it. The hands are not what's doing it, but the whole being, the unified mind, chi, body are working as one to draw it in. But it's the mind that's, that's um, the mind and the awareness is what's gathering the chi. And if you have more to that question, feel free to put it in the chat. There's another question that says, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the previous class, but you've done Qigong a number of times over the years. So no questions right now. Wonderful. I'm reading them for the first time out loud. <laughs> uh, someone says here, I've been able to do the takeaway after morning meditations, bringing chi throughout my body. How does it get to the lower back? She goes where the mind goes. So there's two parts to this question. One is um, when your awareness is there, the chi goes there. The other part is how you visualize that part of your body. So we're working on the chi aspect of our body. So visualizing it 
if you, if you visualize the physical structure, the chi doesn't go very deep. So in place of the physical structure, that's why we visual it as transparent and bright. So you just visualize that space. So it's like growing an awareness of that part of your body, which you probably already have if you have some symptoms there. And seeing that area, you're gonna change your relationship to that part of your body by seeing it as bright, seeing it as healthy and abundant. So drawing chi there by seeing it brighter, more spacious, bring your trust into that spot. And you start gathering chi there and watch what the mind does. Sometimes we train this, we pattern the mind to think it automatically goes, oh, that part of my body is unhealthy. Oh, that part of my body hurts a lot. Oh, that part of my body is injured. And that's just sort of reinforcing that. So if you shift the way you think of that and you relate to that part of the body by nourishing it, bringing bright chi, bringing healthy, bring your heart into it, this sincere place of trust and love for that part of the body, giving it room to be what it is and how it's doing and just loving it and nourishing it and cherishing it. Tracy, please. Um, I had another um, thought about that with pouring chi. There is another way you could do it. You can, if you want to just focus on your back or your front or whatever, you can pour down at one point, you can just pour as if you're pouring down just the front of your body. And then the next time you can go and you can, your hands will go in the front, but you can imagine that you're just pouring down the back of your body and put a lot of focus on the whole back and the spine. And so that's another way you can use pouring chi. Thank you for adding that. Yeah, it's a lovely one for, for smoothing it and harmonizing the chi in the body. And uh, Tracy, there's a question that came up that you were gonna talk about for a moment. Oh, last week that mm -hmm. um, I was talking to someone who was in the class that I know, and she brought up, she was just asking what, my learning trajectory was with this practice because I think she was finding it challenging to get the movements and the mind activity and everything together and was wondering how was it for me when I was doing it. So for me, I, I'm a very head oriented person. And, and when I first began doing this, I had no relationship to my body. I don't dance, I'm a klutz, I, I, had, I just had no, con, I'm not athletic, no concept of a body at all. In fact, if I could just be invisible, I would have been happy. So I really had to build that relationship and with not only just how to, how to, how to move my body doing the movements of the practices, but also to be more internal when I'm doing them. So I had to cultivate that awareness of chi. So the trajectory was for a long time, I spent just learning the movements. I was learning the, the mind activity and everything as I'm doing the classes, but I focused on just learning the movements. I did classes, I followed along with training videos that were available and I just practiced a lot. And then once I felt comfortable with the movements, I started adding the internal aspect and the mind activity. So I felt like I could ignore whether or not one arm was higher than the other, or if I was being, you know, exact in my um, in and out. So, but so I could just start adding that mind activity using my consciousness to go out and come in. And then when I felt more confident with that, with the mind activity and the movement, then I really started building that or cultivating that awareness of chi and feeling the chi in my body is drawing it back in and feeling it, my body or the chi in my body going out as I'm expanding. So it's a process and it it's 
you know, the practice continues to deepen even 10 years after doing it. It's, um, you just, it just keeps building and building. So I'm saying that in hopes that people will not be discouraged if it's not happening right away or feeling like you have to be, you know, I can't coordinate the mind and the body and I don't know what she feels like. It, it's a building block or their building blocks, so. And the other part, I mean, this is kind of um, aside from it, but just she was also asked, she was also asking about, is this kind of it? Does this, is this where, you know, these Qigong practices, is it always gonna be, she, she was feeling like she wasn't getting enough physicality out of it. And so just very briefly, I explained that this is just the first method. This method is just about bringing the chi into the body and you know, gathering and dispersing. The next method is about storing it in your body. And the method after that is about taking the chi deeper. And it's, it's a much more, um, you're gonna get a lot more stretching and more physical movement out of it. And that's down the road, you know? So again, it's a building, block of the, this is this a foundational um, practice so there is more to come if if people want to continue thanks Tracy yeah it's a foundational method that even as you learn more and you come back to this one you learn you get a whole new experience so each one of these methods is a lifetime of discovery yeah you don't stop that way yeah. You don't stop TNUN just because you, you, you I, I've got it now, done. <laughs> yeah. Anna, Stephanie asks uh, what your experience was. Yeah, so my, my experience will lead us into the, will segue into the topic of chi. So thank you for asking. I was super depleted. I had overworked myself, overcommitted myself. I was taking care of my aging parents. I was in school full time. I was working a job and an internship, like way too much, but all of it felt like I needed to do it. And as things sort of started ending, I found at the, as I was doing less that I was wiped out. I was depleted. I was always at this red line where, you know, when you're depleted, there's more emotional irregularity. There's a harder time motivating. The brain isn't as clear. Now I understand that as chi depletion, but at the time it was just, you know, it was burnt out. That's another way of thinking of it. And so um, I was looking for anything <laughs> to help. And one of the things I loved about Qigong is that it works on the consciousness and the mind as well as the body and the chi. So it's a moving meditation. It's not just movement. Uh, and, and that spiritual side of me, so to speak, the personal growth side of me is really uh, compelled by the idea of having something that put all of those together. And uh, now I use it to stay healthy. Now I use it to keep cultivating my life. And um, in this particular practice, as Tracy mentioned, it's really wonderful for restoring and replenishing the body. So chi itself is a renewable resource. Not a lot of those that we work with these days, but it is one. And it's amazing in that way because um, the chi we're working with is called yuan chi. It's this raw chi that's everywhere in the universe. We are in the universe. So it's not just out there. It's everywhere around us. It's the life force that weaves through everything. And um, we're connecting with it. And chi is energy. Everyone, most people think of chi, you know, it's not an English word, so it doesn't have a direct translation, but chi also has in it mass. So when chi gathers together, you have form like our bodies or the table or the computer. And it also has information to it. So, um, you know, there's information that shapes this table. And then in our bodies, we have information that, that impacts the quality of our chi. 
So when we're working with Qigong, we're working on our Qi as this fundamental building block to our physical well-being, as well as our emotional well-being, our clarity of thinking. All these things are greatly impacted by Qi. So we Qi has it, it gathers. We're doing a lot of that in this practice. We're, we're replenishing by gathering more Qi. It also disperses. So, you know, for better or worse, when we are in this external world and we're thinking about all these things and rarely checking in with how am I actually feeling in this moment, what's going on in me, but instead just go and go and go and go and we're dispersing our chi. You know, there's a time when dispersing is, is beneficial, but there's, this isn't good or bad. These are just examples. And then chi is always transforming. It's always changing. So chi is not a static thing. Even the chi in our bodies, I mean, we, we experience change all the time. We're like nature, right? And everything is changing all the time. And that's really one of the beautiful things of our ability to impact our own well being and health by working with chi in a way that helps transform it inside the body from healthier to vibrant, or to healthier and vibrant, to strengthen our chi condition to really nourish. So we can begin to become more aware of how we're using chi, what it feels like, how we're spending it. And part of what we're doing in this first method is we're gathering chi. We've talked about that a lot, building our reserves. We're also growing an internal awareness. We're growing our awareness and Another amazing thing is we're starting to discover how, like the oneness of life, basically. When we go out to the universe and we're coming back, there really is no barrier between us and everything. And once that is experienced on a deep level, loneliness becomes a fallacy. We're never alone. Everything we need is here. We are always supported. It doesn't always look like our likes and dislikes, but it's always here. So this is a cultivation practice that can go very deep and all building into well-being. So the well-being of our, our chi and our energy level, the well-being of our body, the well-being of our emotional state, the well-being of our mind and the clarity of our thinking and our creativity, all leading to a more fulfilling life in a sense. And as we, we gain sensitivity to chi, the other thing I want to say, add to that, is that chi is working and moving and changing whether or not we're aware of it. So um, when you're doing a qigong practice, it's a great opportunity in the beginning when you're, you're new to chi, you may already see chi, you may be very aware of chi already. Um, but if you are new to chi and this sort of concept of chi, just know that as your sensitivity and awareness grows, you will begin to be more aware of it. But it's still working and it's still happening, even if that sensitivity and that awareness is there, is not there. But we're growing that. And Tracy, would you talk a little bit about what it could feel like? What chi, how do you know? what she feels like, or if you're experiencing it. Um, in the beginning, I didn't know. <laughs> I had no idea that what I was feeling was actually chi. So um, yeah, you may experience some things when, when, you're, when you're activating chi that feel a little unfamiliar. So some, and these sensations are just a result of the, the chi and the flow changing. And it's normal, like Jana said, if you don't feel anything at all. But some of the things, some common um, sensations might be movement. Like there are a number of ways that your body just might change or move on its own when you're doing Qigong or, or cultivating Qi. It's not even just Qigong. You might feel some of these sensations when you get acupuncture or if you practice, give or receive Reiki. So it's anything that you're doing that's working with chi. Um, so 
your body might move in a different way, or you might feel a movement inside your body that just feels a little different than you're used to. You might feel itchiness, like, um, it's not, not like that itch, like I can't get rid of the itch. It's like a subtle, pleasant sort of thing. Although I have felt it sometimes like, like something like feeling, I really thought that there was an ant crawling on my face or something. Um, so when you feel something like this, it, it, it just is, um, it's not gonna be a creepy crawly thing. It's a pleasant experience. Or you might feel light or almost weightlessness, weightlessness. So when you're doing the practice, when you get really, really deep into it, there might be a point where you just feel like you're floating or you're flying. Or you might feel heavy or almost even hard to move. So if you're doing the, the lifting the chi up, you might find that that chi ball between your arms as you're lifting it up above your head just feels like it's an anvil between your arms. Um, you could feel cold, not like that frigid cold. If you're in the Antarctic, it's just, it's just a coolness. Like it might be a hundred degrees outside, but you feel cool and pleasant because, or you could feel warm. So it could be 20 degrees outside and you don't have a heater in the house, but you feel your body temperature is adjusting. So these are all common ways you can feel. There are other ways that you might feel that, um, that I haven't mentioned and that I don't even know of. Like I said, I didn't realize when, until somebody had told me about this, that this is, these are things that were going on that were, it's chi, it's chi moving as we're changing and moving through. Usually when we are making these changes and activating that change in the chi flow, usually the transformation happens with ease and it's pleasant. I'm not keep using the word pleasant, but it's, it's yeah, it's just an easy flow. And, and, but sometimes if we are changing the quality and the quantity a little quickly or intensely, we may have something called chi reactions which is also common and it's something you would also possibly get through acupuncture or Reiki. And so a healing reaction is just a normal part of Qigong, but it's not something that you wanna look for or expect to happen. It doesn't have to happen. It just might happen. And um, what usually happens is it's a man how it manifests is just, it brings up like a flare up of a physical symptom or an existing problem or, or brings back symptoms of, a, of an old problem. So like if you would sprained your ankle before years ago, you may feel your ankle is, is feeling compromised again. Or if you're clearing something in the lungs, you might feel cold or flu symptoms or the digestive system, you might have diarrhea or um, you know an upset stomach, nausea. And you can also get chi reactions, emotional chi reactions. So you might, without understanding why, suddenly you're feeling really angry if you're needing to, if you, you might be clearing something in the, um, the liver or fearful if you're clearing something in the kidneys. So these are all things that can happen and it's, it's the practice is shaking loose old information um, in the body and the consciousness. So what do we do if we do start feeling something like this? First, don't panic. It's very normal. Um, just recognize and accept that chi reactions are just a part and it's a natural part of growth, really. So just sort of see it as a positive growth and development, you're doing something that's moving chi and that's a good thing. That's, that's what we want to be happening. So you wanna recognize it, accept it, try to remain positive. Don't go into a place of fear that um, you've done something wrong or you're, you're getting sick. 
and keep practicing because the practicing is going to help to clear out whatever it is. It's going to assist in that transformation and that healing. It's like, it's like a dam that's got, you know, a lot of water is, is trying to get pushed through that dam. And until it can get cleared, you're going to have this reaction. So by doing more Qigong, you're helping to clear that, um, that blockage. And yeah, like I said, don't necessarily expect it. Don't look for it. I remember being at the first retreat when our teacher came to America. I remember so many people around me were having these major reactions. And I talked to Melissa, his wife and translator, and I said, I don't get it. I guess I'm not doing it right. I guess I'm not doing my practice right. I don't understand it. I'm not having a reaction. And she said something like, well, be careful what you wish for. And I swear the next day I had a huge, I was sick for two days and I just brought it on myself, apparently. So um, I think that's about it. Jana, did I forget anything about chi reactions that you think might need to be talked about? No, you know, there's... I think that's that's good. You know, you trust trust your yourself, trust your oh your medical providers. You know, this isn't a substitution for medical care. This yeah. is a supportive um, aspect of your well being and care. That's what I wanted to say. Is that chi reactions usually don't last much longer than about two days at the most usually, or they'll at least start getting better. If it's something that's lasting longer and might actually be a, 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 a medical issue that you need to take care of, then don't just think that doing Qigong is gonna get rid of it. I mean, it may, but it might be something that really needs attention. So try to be discerning there. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to move into a practice, but I want to say, you know, sometimes talking about chi reactions, it's Tracy and I's duty to talk about chi reactions. It's something that we, we have to do um, to have you understand how chi works. It's a part of chi sometimes, but right now you get to watch your patterns of consciousness too. You get to watch your reactions. You get to watch your feelings and whatever comes up about that and, we do a lot of that too in Qigong practice. And so we're always bringing ourselves to this calm, relaxed, natural space. So we're making these adjustments to come back to trusting, learning, growing, being open. And uh, I, I, I uh, encourage you to make that shift. So that as we go into the practice, go back to what we're the purpose of what we're here for, which is well-being and growth. So taking this back to chi for our practice, one of the keys that we've talked about last week and this week is uh, seeing the body as transparent, letting go of images of anatomy. And as you, as you see that spaciousness, the bright spaciousness inside, you may also feel it. You know, ten, you know what tension feels like. You know what expansion and relaxation feels like. So you can explore around with when your awareness is inside, your body awareness inside, you can create some space inside. Invite everything to relax. We're going to do that in the preparation. And then seeing the body as transparent. So... The body really has a lot of capacity for a lot of cheese storage. So you're welcome to just invite it all in, charge yourself up. So when we go out to the universe, you're, you are filling the universe, the infinite bright universe of this abundant, renewable resource of chi. By thinking about it, visualizing it, you're connecting with it. And then you draw your awareness back inside that spacious body. And that's how you bring the chi in. It's very simple. You don't have to do a lot of effort and trying. You just give yourself room to become more familiar with it. 
So thinking about that, that process, the visualization of a transparent body. If you want to just imagine your body as a light body, as just bright white or something like that. If you like a visual, if you want to just sense your body and feel spaciousness inside, you can do that. Whatever works for you. We all learn a little different. And your experience is going to be different than anyone else's experience. And that is wonderful. So we're going to do that. And then when we do the pouring chi section, we're going to do it a few more times. We're going to do it slowly. Normally we do it three times. But we're just going to do it a little more slowly to really feel the chi. And if, if chi isn't really something you're sensitive to quite yet, um, what to do then is just awareness. Bringing awareness in because chi is already there. You're just, you're just dialing up your sensitivity and dialing up your awareness. So bringing your awareness inside and having it travel down through that spacious, transparent body inside. So your mind is at every part that it's traveling down and your hands are following your mind so that you're all unified in one and you're smoothing out, filling that whole body with this relaxing, abundant chi. We'll do that a few times at the end. So let's practice. If you're not on mute already, go ahead and put yourself on mute. And then I uh, will stand up for the practice. Again, you're welcome to sit if you need a modification. Here we go. So finding a space where your feet are flat on the ground, shoulder distance apart, lifting from the top of the head. Letting the chin tuck in naturally and then inviting space to come in between each vertebra as the body adjusts in this posture. Picking a point in front of you to rest your vision on and slowly drawing that point back into the center of the head. Gently closing the eyes. We're going to adjust the body with our eyes closed, the chi and the mind. Then we'll move into the physical movement of the practice. So with your awareness inside the center of the head, behind the eyes, really inside the head. and experiencing the spaciousness inside the body and inviting the mind to relax, the muscles in the face to relax and fill with a sense of ease, filling the head and traveling down the neck. The neck is filling with a sense of relaxation, spaciousness. And guiding awareness into the upper shoulders, the shoulder joints. And awareness down into the arms, melting the body, the image of the body into bright chi. Guiding awareness into the chest. The upper back, inviting relaxation to fill the space of the upper back. The middle back, low back, sacrum, the whole back. Relaxed and spacious. Guiding awareness into the chest, noticing the breath, the expansion, the space that comes with each breath. How natural it is to breathe, how easily we do it without even thinking.
Creating awareness into the belly, into the pelvis, the hips. These streams of chi, relaxation and ease traveling through the full body and through the legs, knees, lower legs, ankles and feet. We'll adjust the chi and the mind with the awareness inside the body, feeling the spaciousness inside. Expand awareness out to become one with the universe. Guide awareness back to the body with a sense of peace and calm. Open to the universe again, this time with a sense of reverence and awe, of respect and gratitude. Draw awareness back to the body with that same awe, reverence, respect and gratitude for this life, allowing the bright universe to nurture the heart with compassion and love. Feeling relaxed, free, and joyful. Chi is moving smoothly and harmoniously. Now we'll prepare to begin the form. If this is your first class, just follow along. This you've been here before, you're welcome to open your eyes, keep them closed. So turning the palms so that they're parallel with the ground. And we'll begin circling the shoulders up, in, elbows go in, knees bend, down, and then arms extend out as we straighten the legs. Shoulders circle up, in, down, and out. Up, in, down, and out, keeping that rhythm going in and extending the limbs, stretching out. And going in and stretching out. Our arms are going a little higher each time. We're going in. If you want to break the mind activity, the mind is in. And the mind expands out. We stretch the whole body, mind, and awareness. And then we draw it back inside to that transparent body. And expanding out. Our arms are at shoulder height. We'll slowly keep moving them up. Going in. So the awareness is inside and awareness expands out and the arms and the body are following the mind. So we're going in, they're synchronized, the mind's leading the movement and expanding out. Going in. and expanding, filling the whole universe, connecting with that bright universal chi and drawing it inside by bringing awareness inside the body. Extending out and in. We'll do one more in this direction. Out, in. and out, turning the palms to face forward. And now we're gonna circle the shoulders going back, down, forward, up, back, and 
down, knees are bent forward, up. You got this nice circle happening. The knees are bent or down, the awareness is inside, and we expand out. Drawing the limbs and knees in and expanding out. And awareness goes inside the body. The body is spacious and bright. And the body awareness expand out of the mind and awareness, seeing that bright universe. Hello, universe. And then drawing awareness back inside. The body is brighter. Expanding out. And connecting to deep inside. Opening. And gathering. Opening out. Our arms are at shoulder height. And right here, just keep your arms shoulder height. We'll do a few repetitions. Going in and out. I encourage you to close your eyes and practice the mind activity. To expand out with the mind. Just seeing the brightness and opening and gathering back. Seeing inside. Opening out. Then connecting back in. Opening. And drawing back awareness. She follows the body's brighter and healthier. Opening out. And connecting back in. Now we'll keep moving down. Extending out. And connecting in. Opening. And drawing back. Extending. Connecting. And coming back to deep inside. We'll do one more in this direction. Opening out. Connecting back in. Arms are going gently to the side. Palms facing back. And we'll circle from the back. Shoulders go back. Up. Forward. Down. Back. Up. Forward. And down. Back. Up. Forward, down, back and up. This is when the mind goes out. We circle around as we bend the knees. We're down and inside the body, circling, extending out and connecting back in. Opening. Drawing back, shoulders are back, up, forward, and down. One more, back, up, forward, down, awareness is inside, arms gently to the side. We're going to connect with the lower jaw. Lower jaw is from pubic bone to the belly button. Seeing that area is bright and transparent. So all the organs in this part of the body are transparent and we're going to nourish them with more chi. So leading with the shoulders, they go up, elbows out, wrists out, and back in. Shoulders up, elbows, wrists, Coming back in, up, out, 
and back in. Up and out, open and guiding back in. Opening out, so lower jaw is opening out. This is a mind activity and guiding awareness back in to lower jaw. So when we open out, lower jaw expands out and fills the universe. And then the universe condenses and lower jaw is brighter and healthier. So when we open out, we can soar like a bird in the universe and draw awareness back in, nourishing lower jaw and all the organs in that area, opening out and guiding back in. Do one more, opening out, drawing back in. The hands come to in front of the body. They come up to middle jaw. Middle jaw is from the belly button to the diaphragm. It's mostly digestive organs in here. And seeing that area is bright and transparent and connecting it with the hands if you'd like. And then opening, leap from the elbows and circle. Coming around and then drawing back. Leading with the circle, circle leading with the elbows, excuse me. Opening out. And as we come back in, knees bend. So we have elbows circling and drawing chi back to middle jaw. We open middle jaw and draw back. We open and we nourish. We'll do one more opening out. and guiding awareness and chi back to middle jaw, pointing the fingers up, they're close but not touching, guiding the hands up to in front of the head. Now we're gonna work on upper jaw, which is from the diaphragm to the shoulders and include the head. So this whole part of the body, seeing it as bright and transparent, doing the same movement we did before, leading with the elbows opening out, the difference is we bring our hands back to in front of the head. Opening, leading with the elbows and guiding back. Awareness is inside. We expand awareness out, connecting with that bright abundant chi and drawing back awareness is inside. The body's healthier and brighter. Opening out and drawing back. We'll do one more. Opening out. Guiding awareness back. Hands to in front of the head. Guiding the hands up to above the head. Opening out like an hourglass. Circling back so that the palms are above the top of the head. The shoulders are nice and relaxed here. And now shower and chi through the whole body. So seeing the body is transparent. This is with the mind and the chi. And the chi comes from above all the way down through the whole body. Inside the body, filling the body. Then we're going to guide chi down by leading with the middle fingers. Relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the elbows, guiding the hands down to in front of the head. With the mind and chi are inside. So it's going through the head. You can imagine your chi hands going inside your head, or you could just imagine that space going through the neck. In the chest. The torso, the pelvis and hips. 
there's a point on the perineum called Hui Yin, and we're just gonna think closed. So the chi goes down the sides, down the legs, all the way down to the earth below. And then the awareness goes even further to the universe below. And you can imagine your chi hands in that universe or just guiding hands up. The ball's in the room with you, the ball's in the whole universe, whatever works for you in this moment. And guiding this up, collecting more and more and more into this ball to above the head. Again, the palms are just right above and showering chi through. It's the effortlessness and ease, lighter and brighter, healthier and smoother. Relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the elbows. Hands outside, but mind and chi inside, going through the head. The head is bright. There's a sense of receptivity and an openness to receive this chi through the head. And through the chest, upper jaw is bright and healthy and harmonizing with middle jaw. And lower jaw. And continuing down the legs front and back of the body, the full body, all the way down to the feet. Guiding chi up. So again, this bright ball, and you can play around. It's light and yet dense. It's abundant. You can connect it to your heart. You can connect it with your intention. Showering it through the body. I suggest or I encourage you to try this one with your eyes closed if they haven't been yet. To really bring your awareness inside. So relaxing the shoulders and elbows, guiding chi down through the head. Awareness is inside the head. Chi flows where the mind goes. Awareness is inside your neck bright and abundant, filling the neck, filling the chest, continuing, filling the torso with a calm sense of well-being, filling the pelvis to the hips, upper legs, knees, your arms are naturally to the side and the chi continues, legs all the way down to the ankles and feet. And do this one more time. So this time, filling it with abundance, whatever you'd like, whatever support you might need. Or just filling it with chi and a light heart. And then showering it down. This renewable resource is filling the whole body, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the elbows, guiding chi down, going through the head. The head is healthy, nourished. Continuing down the neck, the spine is nourished, strengthened through the chest. Seeing everything as chi or brightness or transparency, visualizing it through the body, all the way down to lower dantian. That's our last stop here, right below the belly button. The palms facing lower dantian. And then bring your mind and awareness to lower Dantian. It's inside, right below the belly button, inside. And she goes there, that's all it takes. And guiding the hands around the waist to the back, 
Turning the palms facing the back. Fingers are turning the palms facing the ceiling now up and guiding back with the middle fingers, extending the arms backwards, opening from the back, hands start turning to face forward. And at this point, we've been working with a lot of chi in and out of the body. So we're collecting the chi that's around the body and guiding it back to lower dantian. And uh, women put right hand first, then left. And guiding awareness to lower down tian. That's how the chi goes there. And we're going to spiral it down, spiral it into lower down tian. So moving the hands left, down, right, up. Another time, two. And a third time, three. And then we'll do it in the opposite direction. So spiraling chi in three times in the opposite direction. Right, left, down, up, two. And taking a moment with your eyes closed to nourish chi, just observe. And gently opening your eyes, we're gonna transition back to sitting. So go ahead and grab your chair or make adjustments as needed. Tracy, would you like to guide us through just short um, breathing, settling in? Sure. So getting situated on your seat or on the floor, just gently close your eyes again. Go back into that space you were in as we were standing and you were nurturing chi. Just feel your body, feel how the chi feels in your body now. And with your vision in the center of your head, but a very light awareness in lower Dantian. Just breathe naturally with that awareness of chi in your lower Dantian. In a very quiet space. Just breathe in and feel lower Dantian expanding as far as you want. It can expand to the size of a grapefruit or it can expand to the size of your body or beyond. And when you exhale, just feel that chi contract deep inside lower Dantian. No effort here. Just breathing. You don't need to visualize anything. We're not going for how it looks. Just feel. And if you don't feel anything, it's still there. It's still activating. Just being right now. Keeping your focus inward. Feeling your body relaxed. Not forcing your breath.
And just bring your hands back onto lower Dantian. Feel the chi. Or just feel the sensation of that energy center, the mid center of your abdomen. Now we're gonna do head and face to bring us back into the day-to-day -day life. We're gonna rub our hands, rub the chi between our hands. And using your middle fingers, going out from in between your eyebrows, sending chi deep inside your head, into the center of your head. And gently rubbing your temples, Again, chi coming from your fingertips deep inside, around the bones of your eyes. All is bright and clear. Along the sides of your nose, opening the sinuses, clearing them out. Using your hands across the whole face. Skin is clear and bright. Using your fingers like combs from the front to the back of your head. Combing the chi deep inside. All is clear and bright. Your left hand on Bai Hui, right hand on Yu Zhen, which is the point of the cradle. And you're just tapping the chi in opening those gates up and tapping the chi in your ears, Pump. and then with your forefinger and your thumb, massaging all the outside of your ears, you pull the lobes. And keeping your eyes closed, Go into your heart for a minute. Generate the feeling of trust in your heart. Feel how that feels in your body. Generate the feeling of openness. Love. And gratitude. And generate that feeling of awe that Jana talked about in the beginning. Awe for this practice, for all that it opens up for us. Ah, for where we are in our lives right now. Patience and compassion for ourselves. And filter all of that through the feeling of joy. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you everyone for joining us again and for being so willing to explore and uh, try something new. Um, let's see, the takeaway for this week, we're just gonna build off of pouring chi. So we did the movements of it a few weeks ago. We practiced the mind activity. This time around, still with the mind activity and the movement, working on awareness. So what do you sense? What are you feeling? What is, what is it like? And bringing the awareness inside as it travels down through the body and opening up 
with a sense of curiosity to what that may be like. Because there's a, with the mind activity, we can really be doers. <laughs> and with awareness, uh, it's more like being. So we still have movement, we still have the mind activity, but we're introducing this uh, sense, sense of being and awareness to that experience. And every moment is different. Every pouring chi is going to be different. Even if you do five in a row, each one is going to be different. So really being open to what is it? What, what are, what's going on now? What is this like? And see what that's like for you. And uh, we also want to mention that the diagram of the um, practice is in the either on the web page was also was put into the chat, um, the chat room. So the diagram and the list of basic terms. And then the other thing is that we are considering continuing this class. So if you are interested, please fill out the contact form if you want to hear about it, if you want to um, find out more details, which we are still working out. So if you're interested in more information, just make sure to fill out that contact form on the webpage. <laughs>